world's oldest known cave painting, situated in the cave of El Castillo in Spain, dates to at least 39,000 BCE. It was discovered in 1903 by the Spanish archaeologist Emilio Alcalde del Rio, who was at the time a renowned expert in Spanish prehistoric art. The cave is 300 metres long and is one of the many limestone caves in Monte Castillo in the Cantabria region of Spain. However, it was within the large entrance chamber of El Castillo, known as the Gran Sala, that Alcalde del Rio made his great discovery. Within this chamber, in a maze of narrow passages, he found over 100 images and rock engravings of animals. Among these were images of animals such as deer, mammoths, bison, goats, horses, and even a few dogs. The oldest and most famous of the cave paintings, a group of 40 or so abstract hand stencils known as the Gallery of the Hands, were likely created by spraying paint around hands through a tube. These are situated beyond the Grand Sala Chamber, in a narrow gallery, and were dated to 39,000 BCE, using the uranium thorium method which assesses the radioactive decay of uranium in the absence of charcoal used in traditional carbon dating. After this date was revealed, archaeologists were confronted with a fascinating new possibility. The Andatols became extinct roughly 40,000 years ago, leaving a small possibility that the first artists were not in fact Homo sapiens, but Neanderthals. When we think of cave paintings, it is probably images of prey animals and stick men with spears that we envision. But as mentioned earlier, this isn't the only feature of cave painting, nor is all cave art paint-based. Some cave art also depicts more abstract and solely pattern-based images. In this case, it is likely that the process of making itself is as important as the resulting image. Most cave art has been found in the dark depths away from the gaze of the human eye and so it's unlikely that art was made for purely decorative purposes. While today we may think of making art as a frivolity or luxury, art's presence in such uncertain survival-based times as that of prehistoric man suggests an innate human instinct to create and express oneself. In particular, the diverse forms in which art manifests itself in this vast epoch, in seemingly independent locations, emphasises the significance of art within human society, though what exactly the significance is remains the subject of debate. In an attempt to explain the meanings of cave art, archaeologists generally categorise work into five areas. These are hand print and finger marks, abstract signs, figurative painting, rock engraving and relief sculpture. It's an old habit of archaeologists and historians to put anything of unknown purpose down to a mysterious and irrelevant religious or ritualistic practice. Unfortunately, this may lead us to assume we have nothing in common with these early peoples, which is likely not the case. In fact, this term may be used to describe artworks that had extremely evolved cultural and religious significance, far more complex than we will ever be able to fully understand, but equally still deserve our reverence. Most of us probably remember dipping our hands in paint and printing our handprints on paper at some point during our early childhood, and this act is evidence of an awareness of identity and the need to express it that, to the best of our knowledge so far, seems to set us apart from every other species on the planet. We are the art-making animal. Animals depicted in cave art are probably largely painted from memory due to their location in the cave away from their subject matter. This is also evident in the stylization of the forms. There is little attention paid to scale or perspective, and almost all animals are depicted in profile from their most easily recognisable form. In short, they are symbols, and contrary to popular belief, the most popular animals to be depicted were not the most popular of prey animals such as bison or deer, but in fact horses. Humans depicted in cave art are usually non-naturalistic, very incomplete representations of the human body, taking the form of stick figures. Isolated body parts of people are much more common, such as heads, hands and genitals. Perhaps this is symbolised defining features of what it meant to be human. 
Most cave art was made in red and black pigments. The reds consisted of iron oxides, such as hematite and ochre, and the blacks were magnesium dioxide and charcoal, which may have been ground down and mixed into pastes. Much like painters today will use mediums to alter the properties of their paints, archaeologists have found evidence of binders such as plant oil and animal fat to assist with adhering to rock surfaces. In most cases, it appears that paintings would have been created in three steps. First, an outline was drawn in charcoal. Next, the outline would be filled in with colour pigment. And lastly, the edges would be blended out in darker pigment, perhaps to partially obscure the outline and to add an air of three-dimensionality. Cave paintings inspired many modern artists, most notably Pablo Picasso, who created a series of prints after the Altamira bull, a famous painting found near the town of Santillana del Mar in Cantabria, Spain. The painting was discovered in 1879 and dates back to around 17,000 BCE. Picasso was fascinated with the simplicity of form of primitive artworks, such as tribal masks and Paleolithic cave paintings. During his departure from realism and journey into cubism, his love affair with the symbolic properties of primitivism massively informed his practice. His prints of the Altamira bull perfectly encapsulate this progression from a more detailed approach to pared-down minimalism, and the bull became a recurring motif in his later work. <laughs>